Hi guys, welcome back to my tactics tester series. Now, in this series or in this episode, we're going to be testing out Diego Simeone's defensive masterclass, the 352 by uh, Josh Daly. Now, um, as you can see on the, set of the screen here, it is pretty basic in that you're not attacking or um, defensive, you are set to balance. So you're not going to control possession in every game and it's set up for um, playing against the big boys as well as playing against the teams you expect to dominate. When we've got the ball, we're passing it into space and running at defense, but we're also playing for those set pieces. Key thing about Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid team is they do play for those fouls and those silly, silly challenges that you see other teams make. In transition, we're going to regroup and hold our, hold our shape. So we're going to look to nullify that attack and outside of possession, it's a high press um, up front with a def standard defensive line. The reason for that is it allows our fullbacks or wingbacks to be able to fill in just behind the defense. In terms of your player setup, your goalkeeper is set to defend. You've got two wide center backs, um, both with set to cross less often. That's because normally they will get forward and your middleman is just a central defender. On the right, it's a wing back with the automatic setup and his cross is going to aim for the center. And on the other side, it's a complete wing back. And again, the same thing, crossing aim for the center. Very basic instructions. We're not going too far out of the box. In terms of human field, you've got a Mazala set to attack on the right. who You are going to let free. So they are going to be your main creator in this midfield. They're going to be looking to dribble more and get up to support your front too. You've got your ball winning midfielder and a box to box midfielder who's going to move into the channels. And then your front two, a deep lie in forward who's going to roam from position. His idea will be to drop into that number 10 role. And if he can get in there and link up with your Mazala, you're going to get some luck. And you're advanced forward in attack. Dribble more, shoot more often, and roam from position. We don't want these two players being static up front. We want them to be able to evade the marking of the other team's defense. If we can do that, and if they can do that, we should see some success with this tactic. Now, moving forward for these, we're going to be using Arsenal, Borussia Dortmund, and AC Milan. And we're going to total up the points from each each season and put them into a league table. So at the end of Football Manager 2023, we'll be able to say which tactic we had the most success with. But if you haven't watched one of them before, we do simulate the season. What we do is we set it for our assistant manager to have to play this tactic. He can pick whatever team he wants, but he's got to play with these play this system. Gives us a fair result, and it doesn't mean that I'll tinker with it throughout the season, which I often do. So, let's see how we got on with Arsenal in the first simulation. All right, so the Arsenal save has just completed, and if we look at the league table, we finished third, which isn't a bad season overall. Um, Gabriel Jesus, 26 goals for the season is brilliant, and we also scored 81. We were, you know, third, I think, actually joint second most successful attacking team. 39 goals conceded, so maybe defensively not as good as the two teams above us, Manchester United and Manchester City. Um, and we also made it to the Europa League final, losing in extra time um, to Inter Milan, which is a bit disappointing. But hey, we do. Now, what I do think completely changed our season is the World Cup. So this right here is the first half of the season. We lost two games. We lost 1-0 at Liverpool and 1-0 at Wolves. And we were absolutely amazing. You look at that. We oh, So... We only didn't win four league games leading up to that World Cup. After the World Cup, it was a very different story. This is where we came back here. And you can see we lost 5-2 to City, 2-1 uh, to Chelsea, 2-0 to City again. So we had a very tough run. We actually got beat 6-0 by Manchester United in the FA Cup, which is just a stinker. But actually, on the whole, it's been a really good season. Um, we were you know, predicted to finish third. Uh, sorry, we were we finished third. Um, they they wanted us to qualify for the Champions League, the board, and we did it. So, you know, it's not a bad season overall. The supporters were happier than the board, which is which is really, really nice. <clears throat> and really, I think if you did that tactic with, with Arsenal, you'd probably get some success. Bear in mind that we were predicted by the media to finish fifth as well. So it's not a bad one. Right. So that's how we got on in the Premier League. Now let's see what we got on Serie A when we do it with AC Milan. And we'll see if we can repeat this success because that is a very, very good season. All right, then. So the AC Milan results are in and uh, we won the league. We won the league comfortably by eight points, only suffering three defeats over the course of the season. Um, if you actually look at our whole season, we scored 
78. We only conceded 19 goals across the entire season, which is phenomenal um, when you consider um, the, the whole thing. So, um, <clears throat> I mean, absolutely wow. If we have a look at statistically for the season, uh, Oliver Giroud was our top scorer with 22 goals and Divock Origi chipping in with 20 as well is uh, just ridiculous. Uh, Mike Mangan, who's the goalie, 23 clean sheets, the joint highest clean sheets um, for the league. And Bram Diaz, the former Man City player, chipped in with 10 assists, um, was a long way behind Angel Di Maria at Juventus. But still, we won the league and that is a massively successful season. So 93 points on the board courtesy of Milan. We've got one save left. That is Borussia Dortmund. Let's see how we got on when we gave this to the German team. All right then, so the Dortmund season is now finished as well, and we finished seventh, which actually, in the grand scheme of things, isn't that bad because I tell you, I'm I'm not lying when I say the start of the season, the tactic didn't work. It was abysmal. Um, we we were getting beat by teams, you know, that really we should beat Freiburg. Um, we lost five 0 to Leipzig. We lost three two to Köln, and then suddenly the World Cup happened, and as it happened in the Arsenal simulation the second half of the season was a different story we just went on this amazing run here where we we, we beat or we, we didn't lose we drew games that we you know were losing earlier in the season um we still lost the likes of Bayern Munich and we had a heavy defeat you know defeat against Stuttgart but actually after the World Cup we only lost two league games it was a massive tale of two halves of the season the same as the Arsenal one where we dominated that first half of the season and then dropped off after the World Cup. And the same thing has happened in Germany. If you look at the squad, Marco Royce was the top goal scorer with 19 goals. Um, so unlike the other two saves where we've actually had, you know, or the Arsenal save where we had decent goal scorers, Royce got 19, um, Karim Ademi got 13, and then no one else got double figures, which is pretty bad. Gregor Cabal in goal um, conceded 39 over the course of a league season, um, which isn't dreadful. Um, the, the problem we have is that over the course of the season, we didn't score enough goals. We only scored 50 goals. Um, so that's different to the first two simulations. However, we got into, you know, seventh spot. So, we'll, you know, unfortunately, we didn't get Europe, but we'll we'll take that after the season we had. Amazingly, you know, we we, we didn't achieve anything we were set out, and that is just the way it's going to be. Um, however, if we look at the data hub very quickly... Um, our goals again were slightly higher than the league average. We were pretty much bang on with our expected goals. Um, and we were better defensively than a lot of other teams. So, you know, it just didn't stand out in Germany. However, it might work for you. So let's find out how many points this actually got. Okay, so I've totaled the points up, and over the three seasons, we got 76 with Arsenal, 93 with AC Milan, and just 53 with Borussia Dortmund. We have started that with 222 points over the course of the season, over the course of the, the three simulations with Ram. So will it be a front runner come the end of Football Manager 2023? Who knows? There's only one way to find out. We're going to try and release two of these a week alongside the Welcome to Wrexham uh, Let's Play series that is out Monday. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, and then these will come out on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Keep an eye out for some experiments that we'll chuck in, maybe a few rebuilds and that kind of thing moving forward. I really hope you've enjoyed the video, and I will see you all in the next Tactic Tester on Thursday. And make sure you check out the Rex and Let's Play series uh, next episode, which is out tomorrow morning. I'll see you all soon, guys. Have a good one.